Joe Eichstead, City Engineer. Nick Dooms, Assistant City Engineer. Paul Valler, Public Works Superintendent. Tom Rayon, 4th District Alderman. Sherry Evans in District 5. Dennis Pollock, District 6. Shane Blazer, Mayor. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, we will now call the meeting to order. Item two, review engineering and street department monthly activity report. Paul, you wanna kick us off? Sure can. Uh, the report is attached. Um, spent the good portion of the month of November cleaning up our construction projects for the year. Um, you'll see that uh, we got a large portion of the Lions Park flood levy project completed. The retaining wall has been completed. The earthen berm has been constructed and it's seated and e-matted on the river side. Um, we have one half of the uh, um, railing installed. The other half will be installed first part of this upcoming week. Um, and then items just left to be completed is the remainder of the restoration in the spring. Um, the tie-ins of the bike trail on both ends of the concrete and then also at, uh, at Woodbine where that retaining wall was built. Um, the Fremont Street between 7th and 10th um, is paved and the majority of the concrete work is completed. So areas that we can, we have backfilled. Um, so in the spring we have some restoration work to be completed um, as well as the concrete sidewalks and curb ramps have to also be finished. Um, our maintenance end of things, uh, spent the majority of the month um, getting ready for winter um, and finishing out the remainder of our maintenance work. We worked with Wood County Highway installing sanitary pat repair patches um, as well as finishing up the curb and gutter patches uh, where there was maintenance activity done. Uh, we also provided um, one monthly brush pickup and then the first and second our fall leaf pickup was completed um, this last month. Um, we also had some paver patches left to do on A Street in the median, um, as well as, like I said, getting ready for winter, um, doing, uh, getting the east side or the west side compost site, um, busting the stumps and removing the river dock from the river, removing garbage containers from West Grand Avenue and then installing the um, salt sand buckets at various locations throughout the city. Um, we also then checked plow routes and things like that to make sure that there was no um, high manholes or tree branches. Um, our sign shop, <coughs> um, they assisted the parks department in getting ready for Christmas, um, removing the um, veterans banners along West Grand Avenue um, along with installing the garland along the light poles and then uh, installing uh, Christmas decorations on the expressway and then the various banners in the other areas. Our shop <coughs> um, tends to be, you know, because we're, we're done with our summer maintenance and, and typically ready by November 1st with um, winter stuff. Um, so they just went through and continued to um, make sure that all the snow items were ready. We did also um, sell three pieces of item on auction and those uh, um, had to get ready to go to, uh, they're actually going uh, quite a ways away. Um, so assisting the companies and setting them on the low boys and things like that, um, as well as continuing to do service work for both the police and fire department and our own fleet. Um, and then also happy to say that we are fully staffed. Thank you, Paul. Any questions for Paul? All right, Joel, engineering report. For, for the engineering department, uh, some of the highlights for November, um, our permits, permit applications and, and Stegers hotline locates definitely slowing down. Um, during the month of November. Um, we also have uh, degradation fees that we did final inspections on um, and are preparing invoices for, which will likely go out actually tomorrow. Um, we've also had the traffic counter out uh, at various intersections, uh, trying to collect that data to finalize those stop sign, yield sign uh, studies. 
in addition, um, we'll have it as an agenda item later, but the signal grant, um, we did have a bid opening today for that project. Let's see, as far as our survey work goes, uh, we did complete the Lincoln Street survey, which is a 2024 project, as well as the Wiley Street survey. We got those accomplished. Um, we've got some, a uh, couple water permit applications in and approved uh, during the month of November as well for 2023 projects. Uh, there was a, a host of um, transportation utility accounts that were being updated, so those were reviewed and um, that data was sent back to Water and Light uh, for updating. Um, in, in addition, the rail study, uh, that's been ongoing. Um, I think they're still collecting data. They decided to keep the, the, their equipment in town a bit longer. Uh, they actually moved it over to uh, Bono Avenue to get some data there just, just to see what things were like over there. Um, the, there's a public survey that went out as well. Um, that's gonna run through the end of uh, this month. And um, when I was putting the packet together, there was 700 plus responses and then as of today, there's just over 900 uh, responses to that. Um, I did get some, uh, in the packet here, there's some analytics from that uh, data collection. Um, that was early November. I did get some more recent stuff today um, that I can, I can share with the committee um, so you can see what some of the preliminary uh, results are from that data collection. Baker Street Ped Crossing, um, we've the guys got the bases installed there. We were um, waiting for some equipment to arrive to finish that installation, uh, but that should be, um, that equipment should be shipping here um, maybe tomorrow, early next week. Uh, as well as the West Jackson Street street lights, um, those were expected to arrive um, perhaps tomorrow and then maybe be installed sometime next week. We're still waiting on a schedule for that. Um, otherwise, that kind of the highlights for the month of November. Hey Joe, any questions? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to the next item. Item three, review the bid results for the West Riverview Expressway traffic si signal improvement project and consider awarding the contract to low qualified bidder. Joe? So 10 o'clock today, there was a, a bid opening for this contract. Um, there were two prime contractors that were on the, the I guess, proposed plan holder list uh, and four subcontractors. Um, we, we still only secured one actual bid from Pember companies. Um, overall, their pricing got slightly better. They were also the, the only bidder on bid number two that we tried. Um, but if you might recall that we, uh, because of the, the high pricing, uh, we went back and revised the scope of the project to just be for the West Grand Avenue intersection, uh, confirmed that the grant dollars would still be approved through the DOT, which they, which they will be. Um, with the re revised scope. And the, the bid amount that came in today was $417,889.70. Um, so looking at our, our um, the grant dollars that we have available, the $535,000 with a 90-10 cost share, um, we have about uh, $10,000 left on construction, I guess room to, to work with. Um, so it, it did come in uh, within within the grant dollars and budget that we have that we're anticipating for the project. Um, so with that, I guess if there's still a desire to move forward with the project, we'd certainly recommend awarding the project to Pember Companies uh, in the amount of $417,889.70. and seventy cents. Questions, comments? Anyone? So 
I'll make that motion to award the project to the timber company for the dollar amount stated by Bill. I'll second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, with comment. Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay, item number four. Re request from Alderperson Zacher to consider removing pavers in West Boulevard of 2nd Ave South between Roundabout and Lyon Street and replacing with colored stamped concrete. Joe? Paul? Me. All right. Um, okay, so um, a few months ago, Alderperson Zacher approached us about the area along 2nd Avenue from um, the north side of the roundabout north to the um, north property line of 1320 2nd Avenue um, along the west side of 2nd Avenue. <coughs> um, some of the properties are maintained fairly well. Some of the properties, they're not really doing much in the boulevard area or along the sidewalk, so um, the weeds have grown up in those areas and it looks pretty unsightly. Um, we typically through our maintenance activity in the spring of the year especially, we'll go through and string trim those down to nothing and then sweep them into the road and then pick them up with our, the sweeper as part of our spring maintenance. Um, and then that should normally takes care of it for the year um, is one of the issues um, is that, like I say, the, gr the weeds tend to grow through the cracks on the pavers. The other issue is, is along the sidewalk um, and the boulevard, they have settled. Um, from probably, my opinion, poor construction practices back in um, the early 2000s when that was done. And so there are areas where they're settled along the curb or the sidewalk an inch and then along the back of curb two inches, as well in areas um, where they've done some utility work or s such after it have was constructed um, because of it being a boulevard area. Um, <coughs> so I went through and the area is about 3,300 or 3,400 square feet. Um, if we were to go through and remove the pavers, um, there's four different options there then after the removal is completed. We could either put in um, asphalt pavement, you know, similar to what we do on our medians on the highways. Um, also, there's a fair amount of sections on A Street that are also asphalt pavement. Um, we could just do traditional concrete pavement um, where it would match the, you know, eventually match the color of the sidewalk. We could do regular colored concrete pavement um, and not stamp it. And then, um, then we could also color it and stamp it using the same pr um, stamp that we do along West Grand Avenue and, and uh, I guess West Jackson Street now also. Um, the all of the prices for the installation of the material um, were prices from this year's um, concrete um, contract with the increase in material costs that's anticipated through the vendors. Um, so the, the prices should be relatively good for next year. Um, I don't see much of an increase if I did my job correctly, I'm estimating it. Questions or comments by committee? Dennis, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, Paul, what, what would be your uh, recommendation? Or, I mean, you've looked at it. Uh, I mean, it doesn't make any difference where we look at it. There's some pretty good prices here. But uh, what would you recommend? Or would you just, is it possible just to leave it the way it is? Um, so the one thing that I don't have an answer on, and Joe may be able to answer that, um, is if in the boulevard area between the sidewalk and the back of the curb with those pavers being settled more than an inch, if that's, you know, like if the sidewalk is um, moved around more than an inch and it's a trip hazard, we have to do something about that. Um, I, I don't know that, so Joe may know that. I don't mean to put him on the spot. Um, that's really, I guess, the... I think probably the biggest concern, I, I would think. I, I did not have a, a long conversation with, with Alderperson um, Zacher to, to see really what he was trying to accomplish. Um, 
personally, like I say, we have boulevards within the city that are asphalt. Um, but it's obviously it's decorative right now. So if you went to just plain asphalt, the property owners along there may not be acceptable of that. But same aspect, I, I agree with you. It's a pretty substantial amount of money from, you know, to go to concrete and colored concrete. In, in regards to the, the trip hazard or safety aspect of um, uh, certainly if it's within the, the sidewalk area, the walking area, um, that's where we would be looking for the safety, ha have the safety concerns. Outside of that five foot sidewalk, which the pavers are outside of that, there really, there really isn't much, if any, um, of a real safety issue with that. In other words, it would be better to do something with it now so somebody doesn't trip and get hurt or rather than gamble, I guess, is what I'm looking for here. I'm not trying to put anybody in a spot. I just don't well, know I would, where I to would, go with this. I would say to what Joe said that since this is in the boulevard, it's not in the sidewalk, it, it wouldn't we wouldn't necessarily have to worry about it being a safety issue. If it was the sidewalk that was one inch higher at a joint, then we would have to replace it. Okay. Okay. Paul, is this work our guys can do? Or would you hire it out? S so the, um, the removal of it I have estimated as us doing it. And just for the ease of generating the estimate, we just use the unit prices of the contractor, um, which I would think we would be relatively competitive with that. So yes, it is. I mean, that, that is one thing, um, you know, we would have to transfer some of our other maintenance activities to cover these costs because it's obviously not budgeted. Um, so we would, you know, it would come out of one of those other pots of money that of other maintenance activity that we would be doing so thanks Paul I guess my opinion is that it is on a highly visible area it's on the opposite side of all the river work that's being done um, I personally favored the the colored concrete pavement um, because the, the brick pavers are starting to look rough and yeah I agree that maybe in the future that we can avoid pavers because I think they'll always settle and always be a problem but I just think that if you put asphalt there, it's gonna not have the best appearance along the river there. It would just look nice. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Jerry? How much color concrete is there now? None of it's colored concrete, it's all brick pavers. It is all just regular brick pavers. Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. Back in the early 2000s, that was kind of the plan of the DOT was to do brick pavers on it, on all the different, you know, decorative areas when they had the money for that stuff. And then there's been a switch just because of this kind of very reason, is they realize that brick pavers don't belong, you know, around streets and the constructability in it and things like that. So there's been a movement away from that to the colored stamped concrete now. Any other questions or comments by committee? I guess I'm just, I agree with um, what Mayor said. I mean, it, it, it's attractive if we do this, the stamped concrete, um, but it's a good chunk of change that we don't have budgeted for. You know, our, our, the road roads would benefit from it more. I, I guess I just, I don't know. Say I'm, I'm on the fence as well, uh, but being that there is decorative, you know, uh, finish there currently, I think we've kind of made our bed with it, right? Um, so uh, to me, it's it's going to be you know between the the colored concrete or the, or the colored stamp, you know, trying to be as responsible as possible here. I would I would err for the colored.
And so the funding would come out of contingency, is that correct? We'd have to ask that question. It wasn't, I mean, like I say, not knowing where we were gonna go with this, it would probably it'd either be contingencies or simply moving you know, dollars from a different maintenance project into another one. I mean, the desired finish in that area is, is a flush finish, right? And we're, we're not looking to have a depression um, in the boulevard there. It's not an ideal situation. It's something that we wanna address, right? It's So I'll make a motion to um, approve the replacement or uh, the, the demolition of the pavers and, and, and replacement with colored uh, concrete pavement at a price of $27,774.56. I'll second. Motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we're going to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, ayes have it. Item five, request to remove no parking ordinance on the south side of Clyde Ave from 250 feet to 350 feet west of Lincoln Street. Yes. Bill? So, th so this came as an inquiry from, uh, inquiry and complaint, I guess, uh, from Officer Pilot and um, his work with the Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools specifically Grove School in this case. Um, they had some concerns uh, from, from parents there that are using it for uh, pick up and drop off that there was some confusions, confusion on where the no parking um, start location was and where it ended. Um, the driveway entrance was between those two signs and, and in some cases it seemed that uh, parents were uh, trying to avoid parking on that site altogether which created some congestion and confusion um, so and if I rem remember correctly this uh, no parking ordinance was put in place um, at the school's request as part of the safe roads to school uh, project that the city did in conjunction with the school district um, so the options we could leave the ordinance as is but um, the recommendation would be um, to, to remove the ordinance, repeal the, or remove the signs and repeal the ordinance. Um, I guess a third option would be to leave it in place and add some um, supplemental signs to it that, that would um, aid in saying that no parking between the signs. Um, but I don't, I don't think there's that much need and if the school and, and uh, school liaison officer is um, in favor of removing the ordinance that it would that would also um, be our recommendation. Thank you, Joe. Any questions, comments? I'll make a motion to remove the parking sign and the ordinance. Second it. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Ayes have it. Item six, request by Gary Wilhorn, 4281 14th place south to install street lighting at the intersection of 14th is that place yes at 14th place in Whitrock Ave no so we we um, we looked into this um, there's a policy attached um, sent it over to water and light I had them look at it um, provide a cost back to us um, went through our, our standards to, to see if it you know what the cost benefit might be is is there um, is there safety safety benefit to having the lighting there or is it um, kind of a fruitless type of project so that's that's kind of what we were looking at um, what we did find out um, I mean it's it's fairly low traffic type of intersection there 14th place is entirely residential um, short, short street. Uh, Whit Rock is is a collector, um, so it does carry a little bit more traffic. Um, stop controlled intersection at at on 14th. Um, there was one accident at that location in the last 10 years, um, but that was during the daytime, so it, it doesn't doesn't help in determining, um, you know, safety 
safety increase with the addition of a street light, but um, water and lights fee for the street light, $722. Um, I guess the, there's, also, there's the initial cost and then they add that uh, monthly rate that they charge back to the city for the use of all the street lights. Um, so there's the additional ongoing um, fees for that light unit uh, to con continue operations. Um, there is a two block gap there um, that does create uh, reduced light in that vicinity. Um, although it, it doesn't, uh, it becomes very subjective and discretionary, I guess, on, on where, um, on if, if there's a real benefit here. Uh, 16th Street is two blocks over. Um, that carries a lot more traffic that also doesn't have a street light. Um, so I guess if there's, if there's considerations for a street light uh, in the area, you know, perhaps that's a, a better use of dollars. Um, but otherwise, just presenting the information to the committee, um, there, is there are dollars available uh, in the uh, traffic control budget for a street light installation. You know, such as this. So, if, if it is something that um, is approved, you know, there would be dollars for that. Jay, go ahead. <coughs> yeah, Jay asked if I could speak on this if I was here. Uh, he had another meeting tonight. Um, I know that area. I go visit my mother, and there is a high concentration of people there, pedestrian walkers, there's the church, there's two assisted living centers, um, and it does get kind of dark there because there isn't a lot of, a lot of uh, street lighting there. And I agree, you know, 14th, 16th, one, both. Um, it is a darker area though. And, uh, you know, we already budget, what, about a half a million dollars to do street lights and uh, street light repairs. So one or two more in there probably isn't a huge cost. And, and if it uh, is a safety benefit to that high concentration of people that live there, I, I don't see a negative to it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments by committee? Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess uh, listening to the discussion tonight, that, and I haven't read the having read the uh, synopsis before. Uh, if not one, if not one, maybe two. I think maybe if that's the thing. But after listening, uh, this is somewhat why I wish uh, people who requested or uh, would want this would uh, come to not who turned it in necessarily, but uh, who requested the requester turn something in. But listening to this evening, uh, and uh, if it's that, that dark, but if there are that number of people that are walking there and that type of thing, where street lights uh, maybe should be put in or street light, whichever the committee want to do, but that uh, it also may be an area that uh, if it's being used uh, for walking that much that the uh, sidewalk be considered too. Um, if, if, uh, part of the reason is because of walkers that uh, in the darkness there it'd be to alleviate some of that to alleviate but to take the people off the street from walking and to put them on a sidewalk to walk. Um, which where I come from is I guess the walker should be <laughs> is on the sidewalk. Um, so that may be something to further consider, I think, um, uh, with that there. And I think especially with our new uh, assessment program that we have with all uh, sidewalks and that are installed, that, uh, uh, this may be a uh, prime opportunity then to look at that if that would uh, warrant putting, putting that in there. So I think that, um, well that's, and uh, as um, Mr. 
Mr. Eichstead mentioned that there's only been the one accident in 10 years, um, traffic accident that's been uh, heard in the daytime. It doesn't mean that as we go home tonight, there might not be one <laughs> this evening, you know, because we can't predict that, but uh, hope not. Uh, but lis listening, to, listening to this, it, it, uh, it uh, I guess I'm wondering, it sounds like maybe a two tier solution. One might be a street light, but it also may be to look at if people are walking there to uh, look at putting in sidewalks. Thank you. Go ahead, Cherry. Joe, how many, um, I wanted to go by there, but there are no other stoplights along Whitrock at all, if I, from uh, 16th to. Other street, other street lights? Yes. I can look it up here quick. I know, I know we walked over there as well, and I don't remember that there are. So I know that um, you know the city's corporate limits. Um, once we get past 14th Place to the west a little bit, then we're back in the township again, up to A Street. Um, so that that kind of makes it a little bit challenging, but there. I just know there's all the, you know, the duplexes and all that, you know, I mean, I mean, I know there's a lot of traffic over there. I know I've run into a lot of walkers and stuff, but yeah, I was hoping trying to, you know, why that exact location when there's none on, you know, the other streets either. But right. Yeah, I was hoping I could bring this up here. It's, it's kind of just spinning on me, so I'm not sure that it'll pop up or not. But um, yeah, I don't recall that there were that many street lights along Wet Rock at all. And where does the city in Grand Rapids cut off? Is it 16th Street? So it's kind of all over the place there. I know, uh, the, I know there's. The north side of Wit Rock, so the church is in the town of Grand Rapids, yep. but Arbor Vantage, I believe, is in the city Everything south is in the city up to um, 12th and Weeping Willow. And then, then it kind of goes to all in Grand Rapids until you get about 100 feet before A Street. Um, yeah. So like I say, it's like Joe said, it's all jagged there, you know. And then the church is, and then the next little subdivision, I think there's three houses in there north of the church are in the township and then everything east of 16th Street is in the city because that's waterworks and lighting land and the school forest and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Dennis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I think really that from just listening to the conversation, I think I'd like to probably see street lights on both corners, but now on 16th and Whitrock, is that part in Grand Rapids or is that city? Uh, All that's city? In the, that's in the city. And I, I realize that we've got the cost figures for the one going on, you know, on 14th place, but uh, Water and Lights hasn't come up with a figure that it would be on 16th. But I would make a motion that uh, we install street lights on both corners on 14th place and 16th street I'll second is there not one there already on Whitrock and 16th I think there is I think there is I know there's a pole in the northeast corner of the street it's a wooden pole and I think it's just a dust to dawn light so it's not going to be a a fiberglass pole or metal pole like as long as the expressway or in neighborhoods but I feel like there is just because I, I think we hit it with the snowplow <laughs> five or six years ago so so you guys are saying to put one on 16th Street in Whitrock leave 15th place off and then put one at 14th place 
and then we're to 12th Street and Weeping Willow, and I don't know if there's one more. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. As long as there isn't a street street light currently on 16th and Willow. Yeah, I mean, of course, if there's if there's already one there, then you know we wouldn't have to certainly wouldn't have to add another one. So um, at least the information that I have there doesn't show one. Um, uh, somebody from the engineering department did go out there and look at primarily 14th place, um, and then drove through on 16th. So could have been that um, you know if there is one there that we just missed it, but. Um, um, I guess just to convey the, the, the cost estimate was specific to 14th place. Um, assuming 16th is, should be similar, but it is based upon how much wire they need to run and um, you know, from whatever distance that might be. And then um, the other caveat to some of these that you know, when new lights get installed, especially in residential areas, sometimes we'll also get the, the reverse where now the light's shining in my window and we get some of those complaints back. So it's, it's kind of a, a give and take in the residential areas, but um, certainly um, you know, from a traffic safety standpoint, pedestrian standpoint, um, making sure there's enough visibility uh, is certainly not detri detrimental. And we're talking this $722 that was? For 14th place. For 14th place. Or assuming the same cost for the additional at 16. Yeah. Yep. Or close to it. Tom. Uh, just a question, I guess, for Joel. Um, didn't we at one time, and maybe it's in the, I didn't know to see it in the policy, so that's why I'm asking. Didn't we at one time have where we and may, uh, put a street light every so many feet didn't we have like 150 feet or yeah there was or the 300 feet and maybe we got rid of that I don't remember so it seems like we had a policy that we put street lights so far so far apart at one point in time yeah that, that could be um, I'm trying to recall if that was um, the street lighting policy prior to the the one in that was approved in 2015 um, I'm sure we still have that policy around and, and may have been because it just you know, it just seems like I remember people requesting it and uh, or, you know street lights in different areas and that way it seems like we had a, it was 150 feet or 300 feet at the football fields I don't don't know if it was that far or not but so one of those numbers seems like is what we had for a policy at some point in time and, sure. you know if it got changed it got changed but uh, I guess that, that might be something also to be considered about uh, about uh, street lights, uh, so they don't, uh, you know, so they aren't put at every corner if not needed or something, whatever. So thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is, he, is there any other discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Ayes have it. <coughs> On to item seven, review the traffic signal outage at 2nd Avenue South and Riverview Expressway and consider spare equipment options in the event of future outages. Joe? So I thought I'd just take a moment, kind of recap on the events of the 2nd Avenue Expressway intersection issue that we had at the end of October. And then um, kind of some thoughts and ideas as far as how to manage some of the risk and um, supply chain issues kind of moving forward here, um, see what the committee might want to do with it. But um, so on October 27th, uh, there was a vehicle accident at 2nd Avenue and the Riverview Expressway, uh, which um, ended up pushing one of the two vehicles into the, the traffic signal cabinet. Um, that afternoon, um, I think the accident occurred in the afternoon. Um, so shortly thereafter, we made a phone call to the equipment supplier, got a cabinet on order. Uh, we don't usually keep a spare cabinet. Um, in fact, I don't, I don't know that the city have ever had a spare cabinet um, 
in storage. Uh, but we got an order placed for a spare cabinet. Um, then we also talked that, that same evening with DOT um, technicians, electricians on any spares that they might have that we could at least borrow or any other equipment options that we could utilize. Um, they did suggest a red flasher unit, which we got installed. They let us borrow that on Monday. So that would have been October 31st. Um, we got the signal heads illuminated, so they were all flashing red. Otherwise, the, the intersection was dark. Um, and then by Thursday, fortunately, we were able to uh, get a new cabinet installed and the signals were operational again. And that's the, about the typical time frame that we've been operating under. Um, there was one other accident that took out a traffic signal in 2008, and it was about a, a week's duration uh, to get that back up and, up and running. Um, with the supply chain issues, uh, currently anyway, um, our cabinet, at least talking with the supplier that we would get the traffic cabinet from, um, they took the last equipment off their shelf and had enough to get our cabinet shipped out within a week's time frame. Uh, following that cabinet delivery, the order timeline was pushed out to four to six months. And then in the last, say, month, or at least the last couple weeks, that's now nine to 12 months out. Um, so for our signal cabinet that we're looking at for West Grand, that project, um, that, that purchase and equipment will arrive nine to 12 months from now, or once the contract's approved and ordered. Um, so that's, that's somewhat concerning, especially if something were to happen here in the next, next year. Um, I guess the risk of the outage, um, there, was, there was one other accident that occurred at that, that intersection um, during the signal outage. But if, if I drove it a couple times by mistake, I tried to avoid that location uh, during that week's time. Um, but um, anybody that did drive it, it was chaotic and there were a lot of, a lot of near misses there. Um, certainly not safe for pedestrians and, and even maybe vehicles in some cases. Um, so this, this has happened twice in my 15 years here at the city. Um, the prior city engineer, uh, he was here for 30, roughly 34 years. He recalls one, maybe two instances that it happened. Um, in looking at other communities our size and bigger, um, a lot of them our size don't have spares around, which we haven't had a spare around. Um, some communities that are, that are larger than the city of Wisconsin Rapids, some have spares, um, a spare, uh, but there again, some, some don't. Um, so it's, it's kind of just a discretionary decision point. But um, assuming that the, the supply chain issue is kind of uh, for the foreseeable future is, is that far out, I would, I would suspect that more communities would be looking at having some, some redundancy or some way to um, fill that gap if, if they needed to. Um, I guess as far as financing these sorts of repairs, um, with accident damage, it's covered by the city's insurance. So, um, you know, all of our direct costs are, are reimbursed uh, through the insurance company. Um, so, the options that I propose, um, of course, there's the, the, do, the do nothing option. We could continue operating as normal. Um, uh, the best case option, which I guess reduces our, our risk and, and liability of having to try to maintain a busy intersection. Through a, an extended outage, uh, would be to, to purchase a red flashing unit similar to what we used um, in the interim basis uh, at this intersection to get the signals relit. So there's, they can see the signal heads flashing. Um, they're all red. People know that they should stop. We've got stop signs down, but um, it takes some training for people to get used to a, a big change like that. That's that's relatively inexpensive. Uh, Seven hundred dollars, a, a spare cabinet, um, the one that we purchased for Second Avenue to replace that one. That that's twenty-two thousand um, dollars. I guess a, a third option is is just purchasing a red flasher unit. It's inexpensive. Um, we can have some some options there um, if if we need to deploy that. Um, 
So as far as financing, again, you know, it's reimbursed through this through the city's insurance, but um, you know, to expense those funds, um, we could look at remaining dollars from the traffic control budget from 2022. Uh, we'll know what those funds, remaining funds are, and we could reallocate that for a purchase here in 2023. Um, in addition, there's about 10 to $14,000 in the traffic control budget that was um, going to be used for upgrades of you know, outdated equipment at um, intersections uh, as on an as needed basis that we could we could look at allocating towards this purchase as well but um, I guess the recommendation considering all the factors uh, would be to purchase both the spare cabinet and a, a red flasher unit thank you Joe Jerry, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Joe, Paul, I know when I talked about this and brought this up to you guys, um, I think it'd be a good idea to be proactive in the city instead of reactive. I know, I mean, I know Joe and Paul, I talked to you about um, all the near misses and people calling and complaining and, you know, when, when is the city going to do this? We're coming over the bridge and lights are out. Um, and when we were talking about it before, um, we decided, I know Paul, you had questions as well, but this isn't just particular to that intersection. It is something that we could build I an mean, air put at different different places within the city. Is that correct, Joe? That is correct, yes. The, the new um, cabinets that, that we are utilizing, um, they can be placed other locations. Thank you. Shane? Yeah, I agree with Sherry. You know, it, it's better to be proactive, especially if we could have a six to nine month lead time without uh, an intersection having uh, traffic control signals working. And also like Joe pointed out though, if I, if I run into it, my insurance company is gonna cover the cost of it ultimately. So, you know, we just have the upfront cost while we store it. So I, I, I'm concerned about slide supply chain issues also. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yes, and I agree with the two previous speakers here that I think it's uh, be behoove us, I think, really to have this spare cabinet, and especially that it could be used at other intersections if needed to. And we're sure, de you know, definitely looking at what the time frame is to get things like this nowadays. Um, and even if that wasn't there, even to wait for a period of time, you know, even a few weeks is. A long time, and it, that was dark. It was chaotic. I remember when I went by, it, went there the first time, and not knowing what was going on myself, it was what is happening here. Uh, so it's a. Uh, I think it. I, I think it'd be good to get the spare unit and the and the red flasher. That's the recommendation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'll make a motion to purchase a spare cabinet at uh, the twenty-two thousand, um, along with the red flasher for seven hundred. No second. It. Motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Ayes have it. All right, moving on. Item number eight: <coughs> request to solicit proposals for a bridge rehabilitation report for the Grand Avenue Bridge in preparation of applying for the 2024-2026 BIL local bridge program. Joe? So we became, well, I became aware of this um, portion of the, the BIL funding um, just a couple weeks ago. And so um, this, this wasn't a, a planned or budgeted application. Um, in reviewing that, that um, funding program, the local bridge program, their application is due March 24th and requires that a bridge rehabilitation report is completed. Um, and that's largely kind of what the request uh, tonight is, is um, consideration for um, pursuing a, a bridge rehab report along with an application for the local bridge program. Um, that bridge rehab report uh, needs to be submitted with the application. It gets a, reviewed and approved by the Bureau of Structures. 
Uh, so it's a required component um, to be considered uh, in that grant program. Um, this bridge rehab report is expected to be around fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to to get developed, and it would be a, a contracted consultant type um, service to do that. Um, the local bridge program is an eighty twenty cost share. Um, it and then I guess reasons to consider it um, ultimately is that the the Grand Avenue Bridge is is uh, slated for um, consideration for maintenance work, possible redecking in, in the, the CIP uh, for 2025. Um, so there isn't anything, uh, I guess, real dire, uh, except that uh, if we if we do apply the last two cycles through the bridge program, every project that was applied for was approved. Um, so there's an expectation that um, hopefully that if we we do apply that uh, we would get our project funded um, but I guess no guarantees um, there's future cycles for the bridge program so we could always uh, push it off uh, a year and try try applying for next year I guess it just moves us a year further back in our um, our, our bridge maintenance work uh, and our CIP that we have uh, scheduled so the options, of course, you know, there's the consider next budget cycle. Otherwise, um, the, the recommendation would be to ap approve this solicitation for um, proposals for this bridge rehab report and, and pursue the application. Thank you, Jill. Questions or comments? We make a motion to approve. Okay, there's a motion to approve. No second. With a second, any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Ayes have it. Item nine, request to apply for a highway safety improvement program grant for pedestrian safety improvements at Wood Ave and 8th Street South. Bill? So this was uh, something the DOT noticed us of as well. Um, it's on, they do routine reviews of uh, accident history on connecting highways and uh, locations of potential crash concern. And uh, A Street and Wood Avenue was identified uh, as a potential concern as it ranked 14th in the north central region of the state um, for pedestrian, um, pedestrian accidents with vehicles. And so um, they were recommending that we consider this, the Highway Safety Improvement Program. It's a 90-10 cost share, it's meant to um, fund these, these safety types of projects. Um, we've utilized the program in the past. Um, 8th and East Grand, 8th Street and East Grand Avenue was a uh, highway safety improvement program project, as well as 8th Street and Chestnut Street. Um, we have developed an exhibit and we're putting together a cost estimate right now. Uh, we'd, I guess the procedure would be we'd send it back to the DOT. They'd review it to see you know, how the, the, the safety benefits and the cost, how they weigh out. Um, and then if, if we are eligible, I guess then we could pursue the, the highway safety improvement um, application. But um, I guess I wanted to get this into the committee so that um, with a, a February 1st application date that if there, if there isn't any um, I guess if there isn't any desire not to do the project, that um, w we get permission and the committee knows about it, and we can we can get it applied for. And there isn't uh, at this point there isn't any commitment of dollars. Um, you know, if the project is eligible, we we bring that back uh, to consider the financial obligation, which would be 10 percent of the the cost of the project. Thank you, Joe. Questions or comments? Make a motion to approve. Motion. I'll second. Go ahead, Tom. I'm glad I showed up tonight. <laughs> Got a few comments. Anyway, I'm uh, not again. I'm not against it, but I, because of the busyness and uh, uh, how much traffic there is on Eighth Street, and, uh, and looking at uh, this and other areas, uh, you know, of uh, 
people to get across the, the highway. I'm not sure what the traffic count is anymore. I mean, uh, how many thousand cars per day and that type of thing. But at some point in time, hopefully that street gets redone <laughs> and the underground and everything. But um, I just I just wonder if uh, and, and people may not I, I don't even know what it costs, but uh, and maybe they would like it at certain only certain places to cross, but at some point in time with all that traffic, um, it may behoove us to look at some point in time of installing over, and I know what they cost, over a uh, pass for people to walk over and do it that way that would keep them out of the, uh, out of the line of traffic altogether. And that may, you know, that to me would be a, obviously I'm gonna get to say the it's going to be the more expensive route, I would say. I, I don't know what that bridge type would cost, but it'd be the, to me, it would be the safest route to go. Would be something like that. Would be to take the people off of the street at all, across. Um, and I know people would not like that with all the intersections that we have, but it may be something as we go on that that may be something that. Said all these enhancements that we may be looking at uh, of that this type, that uh, you know, the walking overpass might be the the best thing to do. I, I, thinking about it, I just wonder if that you know, and I'm not saying that that in this case necessarily because I don't even know what the cost of something like that. I said that what it'd be, but uh, that would be the safest route to me. I think. Thank you. Just wanted to say that. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. I, I agree. I mean, it, obviously, uh, getting the, the foot traffic off the road and, and out of the hazard would be the best solution. Um, but again, I think, as you alluded to, the, the cost of that is going to be probably significantly higher than, than what we're looking at here today. Um, I guess we'll find out. Um, but I I think this is, uh, this is the next best thing that we should definitely uh, move forward with because of um, the situation we are dealing with. We do have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Ayes have it. All right, item 10, review the pavement replacement plan. Okay, so um, in your handout, um, item number 10, or attachment number 10 um, is some graph documents by year um, just kind of showing the amount of, of pavement that we have um, anticipated right now um, right now this list is with waterworks and lighting commission and the wastewater treatment plant to see if there is any issues in those areas with any of the underground utilities that they want to take care of in the next 10 to 15 years so obviously if they do we'd stay away from that um, <coughs> kind of identified some streets throughout the next seven years. Um, there needs to be some additions in, in some of the areas um, where we're a little light. As it is right now, we will have right around 256,000 for next year. Um, but that doesn't mean that we have to spend it every single year that we may carry it over so that we can have a bigger year or whatever. Um, I guess we're just giving you this as information, or do we want to approve this? Probably just as. Yeah, just just for information for right now, because like I say, I'd, I'd hate to approve it, and then we have to adjust it because of one of the utilities or whatever. So um, we, you kind of see in there, um, I believe it was in 24 and 25, um, we have some borderline streets again similar to what we did this year there was a request from the town of Grand Rapids to um, participate uh, out on the area that we were just talking about actually 16th Street from Two Mile Avenue down to Griffith uh, we would attack that as one project um, with them paying for their portion and us paying for our portion same goes with uh, Two Mile Avenue from 16th Street um, it would actually go outside of the city limits uh, is what they're originally talking about, but they have not 
done any funding or anything like that yet, but they just that those roads are in tough shape and they're partially ours and partially the township. So. Item 11, review the referral list. Are there any referrals to add? Anything anyone would like to discuss? Hearing none, move on to item 12, set the next meeting date. Joe, council chambers available. Just double checking that real quick. Yes, it's, it's all set for January 5th, 5 o'clock. Okay, we're good to go there. And item 13, adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. No. I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.